Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing in at five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 146 and one pound, with a record of two wins against just one defeat from Caldwell, Idaho, representing Team No Excuse, Vincent De La Fuente. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, standing at five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 144 and nine pounds, making his MMA debut from Boise, Idaho, representing SBGI Idaho Combat Fitness, Benjamin Hollier. Our referee in charge when the action begins is Nate Decker. You know, these are some of the fights I like the most, kind of the no excuse versus SBGI, two of the biggest gyms that we've had here. Of course, Johnny Perez does a great job with his guys uh, out there with Team No Excuse. And of course, you guys and your team with SBGI Idaho uh, should be a very exciting fight right now. Very exciting. So these guys bring it so we always know when we fight those guys, they're gonna they're gonna come out and fight. Good front kick there by Ben Hollier, trying to keep that distance from De La Fuente. The big thing about starting your MMA debut and you don't really know what you're getting into out there. I mean, the spar, you do all this stuff, but a fight's a whole other world. Ben going to his wrestling That's background, beautiful. big takedown nice take on down. Vincent De La Fuente. Ben Hollier definitely looking back on that wrestling background, as you mentioned, former Boise State wrestler. Really a fan of taking that to the ground. Uh, a couple right shots there. That's one thing, though, being a wrestler. you got to remember the jiu-jitsu side of things, and that's, you know, he, he's doing a great job controlling on the ground. He's, he's missing opportunities that are MMA and jiu-jitsu oriented. That he, you know, it's just, see, right there, making, making wrestler movements. We were always taught, you know, you split the legs. How hard is that to come from a wrestling background when that's been so long and make the adaption with that jiu-jitsu into the MMA style? It's, it's not real hard. It's, there's a few nuances that are different. You know, you know, obviously being on your back and, and, and jiu-jitsu is okay. Wrestling, you don't want to be. But you just got to learn to change a few things that you would normally do in wrestling to defend things in jiu-jitsu. And get Dan LaFuente got that uh, leg inside the arm there at Ben Hollier, probably trying to keep that at a distance right now and really, really making Ben work for, for what he wants right now. He's just trying to create some space, and he's, he's doing an all right job with it. You know, but that's the problem. There come the right hands by Ben right there. Great. He's got him stacked up against the cage. He has very, very limited movement. You know, it's a couple good punches, and this could be on. But he's doing the right thing. He's got his foot on the cage. He knows he's got to get his head off the cage. One minute, 10 seconds left in round number one between Vincent De La Fuente and Ben Hollier. Ben Hollier been in firm control of this one pretty much the entire fight at this point. Really not letting Vincent oh, get out of oh, it. Oh, oh, good reversal there. Almost had it there. Almost the reversal. Good Almost movement there by Vincent though, to really ben. follow through, but also Ben realizing what Vincent's doing, let him roll through it and get back in control. Now, that's one thing wrestling will do is it creates a lot of body awareness. hands on his body, not on the mat. Of course, you can hear Jesse Brock in the corner over there calling out the <laughs> shots for Ben. Usually, Definitely. Usually you guys are on the other side of the cage. Coming down to the final 30 seconds again, round number one, all amateur fights, three three-minute rounds. When does the body clock start kicking in? Obviously, your corner, you're going to hear the clap for 10 seconds, but when does your body really tell you, okay, it's time to go in this round? Um, you know, your body, that just depends you're, 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 how, how aware you are of what's going on around in the round. Um, I always make sure my guys tell me I got short time is, is a big thing. And, and, and like in wrestling, that was my cue. Short time, we got to go. We got to go. And you can take a risk at that point because you have, you know, it's really hard to get submitted in 10 seconds. So It is not impossible, but it is. It's not impossible it, or impossible. But, um, All right. We'll take a look at the replay now brought to you by Project Filter. You decide when. We'll show you how. Again, here's the stand-up, and uh, Ben goes, shoots in for the single leg takedown there and really just slams him with one leg down to the ground there, and, and he was in the driver's seat for the rest of the round. Yeah, you know, he hit a nice single. You know, he knew where he wanted that fight to go, and it, I think that's a good thing in your MMA debut is, you know, get where you're comfortable. And at this point, as we are sitting here in the first break, you can see Vincent De La Fuente looking over at Ben Hollier, Jesse, 
Uh, in the corner there, Scott Thomas in the corner calling out and giving instructions. You've seen the round. Ben knows that he's good on the ground against this guy. In your mind, to, to reverse, what does Vincent have to do? He's, I mean, he's got to know now he's going to be looking for takedowns. So, I mean, if I was his coach, I'd, I'd, I'd be telling him to lower his stance a little bit and be more aware of the takedown. All right, here we go. Round number two between Vincent De La Fuente and Ben Hollier. To stop that takedown especially, you know, against a guy that you really know is a wrestler, you got to keep a little bit of distance. you got to keep your footwork going, some movement, some lateral movement like that. Good lateral movement to keep that, to stop that shot. Good knee there by Vincent De La Fuente. But, he's got but again, the control by Ben Hollier, that wrestling background paying off as he gets Vincent De La Fuente back to the ground. Don't let that guard back. Any good wrestler right there, you're going to be in trouble as soon as you let him get to that body. And that's part of that being being mobile and, and moving laterally. Now you saw a head kick attempt there by Ben Hollier. Maybe you're a little slow than his coaches would have liked. Is that something, obviously, your familiarity with Ben that he's been working on his kicks? Obviously, wrestlers typically aren't going to come in with a lot of martial arts and kicking styles like that. You know, Ben's been training for quite a while um, now in, in respect to... A lot of amateurs, you know, we told him, and I, you know, he asked me when he first started fighting, I said, take your time. Good. Ben Hollier now have the back position, just letting those fists fly. He's got the lefts coming in. Vincent De La Fuente, at this point, all he can do is hold on. He's got to control his hands, and he's got to get one of Ben's hooks out. He's got to get the hook out of, out of, from Ben. He's got the so, right leg. Yeah, I mean. Right leg hooked in there. Ben's going to just continue flattening him out like that. And, and he's got both that hip hooks pressure. in, stretching him out. And really, at this point, it's kind of Ben's decision of what he wants to do next. He's just going to pepper him with little shots. Is, I mean, you know as a fighter that ref's not going to let that happen for very much longer. And now the fists are really starting to fly. Vincent's got to do something See, to get ben, out of this if he hopes to survive. That's those lefts are just flying in there. Those aren't super hard punches, but they're going to they're gonna win the round or that ref's going to step in and stop it. So you've got to really create a scramble to get away. I mean, even if it's... Anything you got to if you're the bottom guy like he did there, you know, he creates a scramble, he gets back to a guard. Just a little over a minute left in round number two between Vincent De La Fuente, Ben Hollier. Tad bit more offense by Vincent in this round, but Ben still really kind of dictating the pace throughout. He started off to try and control the distance and, and, and avoid that, and then you know, he stopped his movement for a little bit, and Ben closed the distance and got that body lock. He's doing the right thing here, though, he's got him, you know. He knows he's pinned up against the cage, but Ben just got it free. But he was controlling arms, trying to control the head. If you're the bottom guy, you want that guy close. If he has no space to punch, you're pretty safe. You know, you, then you can start working your jiu-jitsu like this. You know, he's crawling up high with those legs. Ben's got to be aware of it. So we approach 20 seconds left in round number two. Vincent De La Fuente doing all he can do at this point to hang on and bring this to the third and final round, which... It looks like we're going to a third round. One thing about being a wrestler, being on top in that position, is ground and pound is kind of still foreign to you. Because we don't, I mean, you can't really fully ground and pound a guy in practice. So, yeah. you know, you get, you, get, you get into a fight, and I know my first fight, I got on top of the guy fairly quickly, and I didn't know how to throw a proper punch from there. So it, it does take time, and it, it, there is a skill to it. It's not just what people would think that it's just... You just swing fists. As we take a look at the Project Filter replay brought to you by Project Filter, you decide when, we'll show you how. Again, Ben Hollier doing a great job controlling the ground and, and really forcing Vincent De La Fuente to expel a lot more energy than he probably wants to at this point in the fight. There's there's two things there, you know. It's it's morally, it, you, it, it puts you behind in your own head and you start looking desperate. Two, it's a lot of work to get off your back, get someone off your back, or just control someone from the ground. I mean, typically you think someone laying down, you're not going to expend much energy, but it's a lot of work to avoid that damage. You don't really want to assume anything. You also necessarily don't want to let the fight go to the judges. It may be a safe assumption on my part. We'll find out here in a few minutes. Two rounds to nothing for Ben Hollier over Vincent De La Fuente. It's all or nothing for Vince in this round. It is, but, I mean, at the same time, even winning those two rounds, this is MMA, anything can happen. One punch, one bad shot, it could end the fight. So Ben's still got to stay as sharp as he was in the first round. Third and final round, but, big front kick there by Ben Hollier is uh, Vincent De La Fuente really 
really probably wants to keep this one up at the ground, and he's got to go for the finish in the next two and a half minutes. He does, you know, and with it being amateur, the three minutes is not very much time to work. You know, you can see how much time they're just trying to gauge and find range to hit to land something, but you've got to put work in if you're behind. Another single leg takedown there by Ben Hollier. Good job by Vince Morales, or excuse me, Great, Vince Vince scramble, to get out of it, but again, Keep Ben with that under. control, staying on kind of like a pit bull, not team, letting him get too far away. Right you know, right it's arm. it's Good, just, we call it chain change. wrestling. Let's you just change one shot face. to another shot, and here we go. There we go. Let's start to turn him. Vincent doing a good job using the cage to his advantage, trying to work his body, get out of this hold, and Ben really just doing the same thing he's been doing this entire fight. It's going to benefit him to keep his feet up against the cage. He's got somewhere to push. He's got something. It's really hard to just straight bridge off, of, especially a really good wrestler. But, you know, see, he's, he's turning his hips. He's doing the right things. He knows what he's got to do, but it's a whole other world of knowing what you have to do and being able to do it. Ben looking to try to get some sort of maybe crucifix there. He's got there, kind of a Kimura. A wrist, some sort of a wrist lock somehow. And this is where you talk about anything can happen in MMA. Yeah, it's like a reverse bottom side key lock. He's got a good wrist lock in there. Ben's doing the right thing. He's snaking arms inside. I think he's taking all the pressure off him. Knees to elbows. Knees to elbows. You can see the strain on Vincent's face. He knows what he has in front of him right now. A good setup to a wrist lock, but again, great job by Ben to get out of it. You know, one thing about being a wrestler is you can see him looking over at Jesse. And as a wrestler, you learn to listen to your coaches, especially in a situation like that where it's a little bit, you've got a second to think. Come up on the final 50 seconds of this fight between Vincent De La Fuente again. Ben Hollier in the driver's seat in this one. No quit in uh, Vincent De La Fuente really doing what he can try to do. Had had a good good shot at an arm or uh, wrist lock there, a version of a wrist lock there. But again, Ben really doing a good job, kind of going uh, toe to toe with Vincent. Yeah, he's you know he's got to know he's got to try something he's got to try he's got to De La Fuente's got to really try and chain whatever he can. A go go plotted you do not see this very often. Oh my lord! You don't see this at a high level. I think there's only been one in MMA and it was done by Nick Diaz against Takanori Gomu. Ben's just got to hang on. He heard the bell or he heard the clap. So okay, again, you talk about this hold. What exactly is he trying to do right now? He's got a go go plata, and so I mean he's. You got his shin, and you're just going to pull that head down across the chin and cut their airway off, and it hurts. You know, you're not just cutting their airway off. You're going to kind of crush their, their, their windpipe against your shin. And like I said, the only one that I know of is Nick Diaz doing it against Takanori Gomi at uh, one of the Pride events. And so for him to lock that in and get that close, it's impressive. All right, we go back to the Project Filter replay brought to you by Project Filter. You decide when, we'll show you how. Good physical action to start the fight. Again, the story of this one, as you'll see here in just a minute, Ben Hollier goes for another single leg takedown. This is where we saw Vincent almost roll through it, a little bit get out of it, but again, as you talked about it, Ben just kind of rolling with the flow of the fight, getting him back down to the ground. Chain but wrestling. That's day one stuff at Boise State, is learning how to chain wrestle. <laughs> and we've got our first fight going to the judges, and we are getting those scores tabulated. We'll have the results official for you in just a couple of minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will go to the judges' scorecards. Our judges, Scott Marker, Laz Martinez, and Steve French, all agree we have a unanimous decision out of the red corner for Benjamin Hollier. A unanimous decision victory for Ben Hollier as he is successful in his MMA debut.